Today we are talking about um, our review notes for 9.1 through 9.6, and it's going to help you for your quiz on Monday. Number one, write the percent equation. This is going to be something on your quiz that you're going to have to write out pretty much exactly like this. So if you know what it is, go ahead and write the percent equation down. All right, who knows what the percent equation is? What is it? P times of equals is. Box it in. Make sure you know that formula. So number two says write the percent of change formula. This is the one that we did yesterday. This is what your homework was all over. Does anybody remember what the percent of change formula is? Mason, what is it? P equals AOC over the original. Okay. P equals AOC over what? Original. Over the original. What does AOC stand for? Amount of change. What is it? Amount of change. Amount of change. Okay, so how much it changed over the original amount. What do you always do to your percent when using the percent equation? Remember, we just had the percent equation, P times F equals is. What do you do to your percent, guys? Write it as a decimal. Change it to a decimal. If you don't change it to a decimal, you will not get the right answer. So make sure you always change it to a decimal first, and then you can multiply P times F equals is. Number four says write the percent as a fraction in simplest form. Every time that we have a fraction, so let's say like you got a 24% on your test. That's 24 out of what? 100. Out of 100. Every time you have a percent, it's always out of 100. So what would this be? 24, 24 one hundredths. The main thing you got to know, though, is put it in simplest form. So all you do, you plug it into your calculator, you hit the equals button, and it will pop out as the simplest form. What would it be? Okay, if you were to work it out, you could easily figure out you divide by 4, and that will get you to that. Okay, 6 25ths. Go ahead and do problem B on your own. 45% change it to a fraction and put it in simplest form. What does 45% mean? 45 Four five one and what is it in simplest form? 9 twentieths. Excellent job. Number five. Now we're flipping it up. Write the fraction as a percent. When you put 6 over 21 into your calculator, what does it come out as? All right, it comes out with a really big number that looks exactly like this. If you remember, now, how do I get this to turn into a decimal? Move it over two places to the right. Every time, I always want one number after the decimal point, okay? So, right here, it looks like, and this is what I saw a lot of people write for me, 28.5. But, if you remember, you have to round. So, that 7 right there is going to bump the 5 up to a what? 6. A 6. So, your answer should be 28.6%. Who got that one? All right. My first two that had it were Tati and Jakari. Good job. Number six says, use a proportion to answer the question. Does anybody remember what a proportion is? What is it? Okay, in general, a proportion is when you have two fractions that are set equal to each other. So it could be something like one-half equals five-tenths. It could be three-ninths equals one-third. Basically, a proportion, just know that you need to have this. You've got to figure out. A proportion is when you have two fractions that are equal to each other. So, by doing that, I need a formula that we have memorized, or that we need to memorize, that will help us for this. So, tell me what that formula is. is over of. You're right. Is over of, that's a fraction, equals P over 100. That's a fraction, and they're set equal to each other. So now all you need to do is plug those things in. There's one that's super simple to find every time. Which one is the easiest to figure out what it is? The P. The P. Why is that the easiest one? Because, because it says percent right there. So all I'm doing is I'm taking that 22, and I'm going to plug it in to where the P goes. Now, you do not need to change that to a decimal, okay? You cannot have a decimal inside of a fraction. So you're simply just going to write 22 
over 100. Do I know what my is will be? No. No, because it says what number is. I don't know. So I'm just going to put a what? An X. An X. Do I know what my of is? 62. Of 62. So let's plug that in right there. Now, I do not care which way you come up with your proportion answer. It looks like equivalent ratios will not work, so you can either do it with algebra or cross products. Go ahead and try to do it on your own. So, if we did cross products, what am I multiplying? Okay, you just multiply what's across from each other. You get 100x equals 62 times 22. What is 62 times 22? 1,364. Now what do I do? Divide by 100. Divide by 100. You've got to be fair. And you're left with what? Okay. Should I put a percent sign? No. No, because if you go back, it simply says what number, and the number is 13.64. And that's what you have to do when you need to use a proportion. Just make sure your proportion is is over of equals p over 100. All right, number seven says use the percent equation to answer the question. What is the percent equation? P times of equals is. Now, at the beginning of our notes today, what do we have to do to our percent? Make it Change it to a decimal, okay? So just remember, you've got this decimal point back here, and you move it over. So what do you get? 0.25. 0.25. Do we know what my of is? Yes. What is it? Okay, always whatever comes after the word of. What is my is? Okay, when you multiply that out, 75 equals x. Should that be a percent? No. no, if you look back up here, all it says is what number. So that's the number. The answer is 75. All right, number eight says identify the percent of change as an increase or decrease and then find the percent of change. This is exactly like our homework that we did yesterday um, and the uh, lesson that we had in class. So what's my formula that I need for percent of change? AOC over original. Tell me one more time. What does AOC stand for? Amount of, change. amount of change. How do I find the amount of change from a 40 to a 50? 50 minus 40. Okay, 50 minus 40. What's that? 10. 10. All right. Over the original. What was the original? 40. Okay. When you plug it into your calculator, or you might know this already, what is 10 40ths? 0.25. Okay, or 1 fourth. Now I got to change that to a percent. So what do I get? 25%. Now, good job. Okay, you know you had 40. You're moving on to 50. So that's definitely an increase, all right? 25% increase. Anybody not understand or need help with that one? Okay, just a couple more. Number nine. It says to give the angle that would correspond with the information given in the data. Do you guys remember what the formula is rise to use? Run. Not rise over run. Nope, this is what it is. P times of equals is. Change the P to a what? To a decimal. Change the percent to a decimal. What's 45% as a decimal? 0.45. Now, if you remember, this right here, the of is the total. The is is the part. What is the total amount of degrees that are in a circle? Six, 360. 360. So you're going to be multiplying it times 360 to find the part or what the angle would be. When you do that, what do you get? 162, 162 degrees. 162 degrees. It's very important that the degrees are attached to it. Okay. Otherwise, you don't know what it's talking about, 162 what. So let's go to the next one, 20%. What do I do to find the answer? 2.2. And what do you get? 72 degrees. 72 degrees. And the last one, what do I do? Okay. Now, these are your answers, but you have a way that you can check to see if you got it right or not. What can I do? What should I add all those numbers to? Okay. So if I add 162 plus 72 
plus 126, that should equal all the degrees in a circle, which is 360. When you plug that into your calculator, does it work out? Yes. Yes, it does equal 360 degrees, so that helps you to know you probably did it correctly. Okay? Next one. Number 10. Only 13 students came to class on Monday. Normally, there are 18 students that come. What percent of the students actually came to class? Does anyone think they know how to do it? There's no special formula. It's actually pretty simple. You need to figure out how many kids came out of how many total kids there are. What do you think? 13 over 18. 13 out of 18 came. Okay, so change that to a decimal, and then let's change that to a percent, and that's going to give us our answer. What is 13 18 0.72 repeating. What does 0.72 repeating mean? 0.72.2222. Okay, it's repeating the 22222. All right, you could keep going on forever, but if you remember, I only need one number past the decimal point. So what's my answer? 72.2%. Only 72.2% of the class actually showed up. Last problem of the day, number 11. Write the percent as a decimal or the decimal as a percent. So the first one, I have a percent, but I want you guys to give it to me as a decimal. What is 25% as a decimal? 0.25. Okay, great job. You did it quick. Just remember, your decimal point's at the end. You just move it over two places right there. You get 0.25. The next one, I've given you a decimal. 0 0.039. How do I get that to be a percent? Move it two places to the right, and what do you get? 3.9%. All right, all of these things, this is all you need to know. If you know this stuff and you understand this stuff, you will do great on your quiz on Monday. So just spend a little time reviewing over the weekend, and we'll come back on Monday for that quiz.